All right, today I am reviewing Critical, or more specifically, Critical's collaboration IMs. If you don't know who Critical is, let me just put it this way. If I am an IM reviewer, he is the IM reviewer. He is probably one of the most prominent IM reviewers on the planet today, and this is thanks in part to his extensive IM measurement database, his infamous ranking list, and his concise, harsh style of reviewing. He's even started branching out into collaboration IMs, which are what I'll be taking a look at today. Um, now, it's only fair to note that there are definitely some biases present on my end. In many respects, Critical served as a powerful inspiration for my own style of reviewing, and he's still someone that I look up to very much in this hobby. But it's for all these same reasons that you can expect me not to pull the punches when it comes to my assessment of his IMs. And without further ado, let's get into the review. Okay, just as a quick heads up, I'm not going to be covering the build, the accessories, the presentation, or anything of that nature really, just because one, I personally don't really care about that stuff that much, and two, you can always go watch some other videos and um, figure out that stuff on your own if you'd like to know more about it. What I can tell you in great depth about though are the actual sound of these IMs, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, the KZX Critical CRN, basically the collaboration that no one ever saw coming, and that was something of a meme in the community for I think going on like two years or something, but it's here. I'm going to be blunt and say that the KZ CRN is really just okay. The, t oh, actually at first we do need to talk about the uh, KZ Zex, because this is technically the Zex Pro, I know it's confusing, but the Zex Pro and the CRN are actually the same IMs, and this is building off of the original Zex. If you have not heard the original Zex, one, you probably don't want to because it sounds awful, and two, if you like that sound signature, then you will probably not like the Zex Pro or the CRN because it sounds distinctly different. The first distinction of the CRN is basically the bass shelf. Most of KZ's tunings sort of tend to emphasize more dirty bass responses, and by this I mean generous amounts of mid bass, um, and that is not the case here. While the CRN definitely still has a substantial bass shelf, it's a lot more controlled, it goes down at a 45 degree angle, and just in general, I would say it comes across maybe more dampened and more subtle in the grand scheme of things. It's there to lend a foundation to the rest of the sound. So yeah, definitely a welcome change. With that being said, the tonality of the CRN is not without flaws. Um, one of the biggest issues that I have with it personally is the upper mid range, which is quite forward and sort of exacerbates issues with sibilance. Um, in addition to that, there's also a peak at like, what is it, 8K, I think, in the treble. It's real, it's not just a resonance peak on the graph and that lends to some timbre issues up top. And um, just in general, I would say that the components being used in the CRN, they don't exactly sound hi-fi. Like, I know that the Chi-Fi cultists are going to get really pissed off when I say this, but you just can't use components like this and sort of expect to get a high fidelity sound out of it. Um, I think the treble just has some metallic issues in general, um, but the effect of this in tandem with that upper mid-range tilt is that it effectively makes a lot of vocalists sound like they are chain smokers. Um, I, I really think that's the only way of putting it. They just sound gravelly and sort of hoarse a lot of the time, um, when I know they shouldn't be when I listen to my reference gear. As for whether you should buy the CRN, if you're a big fan of Critical and you want to support his work, then I would say go for it. Uh, with that being said, there are IMs like the CCA CRA that I think are more refined for the um, respective driver topologies. Um, if you ask me just in general, the sort of tribrid setup that the CRN is running was more gambit by KZ at the uh, more drivers equal better crowd, which I don't think quite pays off. Okay, and here we have the FHE Eclipse. Um, this is another collaboration that I personally didn't see coming. So I guess the question now is whether Critical's expertise in the tuning department is enough to bring the FH3 to a more remarkable level because it was decidedly average to my ears when I first heard it. And the answer to that unfortunately is mostly a no in my opinion. Straight from Critical himself, the FHE is intended to be a bass heads IM. It has a lot more mid bass than his usual tuning philosophy with a bass shelf that comes down at I think around maybe 400 hertz or so. It's definitely a little bit further reaching than some of these other IMs in this shootout, specifically the uh, Midnight and the Dusk. You can have a lot of bass and make it sound good. Um, I've heard a lot of IMs like the Empire Ear ones, for example, that have ridiculous amounts of bass, but I think that they sound very good still. And the distinction here, where the line sort of has to get drawn, is when it comes to technical performance. 
And by this, I'm sort of asking whether the baselines, the individual baselines are well delineated, whether there is a sense of slam, there's a sense of thickness to the notes, and whether there is a sense of maybe um, bass texture, so that sense of realism to notes in the decay. And in my opinion, at least, the FHE just doesn't have it. Whatever dynamic driver feel is using in the FHE is not very good. Uh, bass generally just sounds quite bloated, sort of smeared, and very lacking in bass texture. There are some other minor issues that sort of crop up when you go through the rest of the tuning. So yeah, I do find the mid-range, the upper mid-range in particular actually, to run a little bit hot at louder volumes. And in addition to this, there is a peak at 5k Hz in the lower treble, so you get that sense of percussion compression that Resolve, for example, really dislikes. Um, I don't mind it as much. With that being said, it is sort of an issue in tandem with the um, that emphasis in the upper mid-range there on the Eclipse. But yeah, I'm just not really sure what to make of the Eclipse. Um, it's, it's not the worst thing I've heard for $150, and it's certainly better than the FH3, the original FH3. Um, the original FH3 just had major issues. It sounded very honky. It had like a bump at maybe like, I think 1.5k hertz in the peanut compensation. So it just made it sound very congested. And then it also had, um, I think, incorrect or inadequate peanut gain. Um, so yeah, definitely better than the FH3, but again, that is not a high bar. And in my opinion, at least, the FHE Eclipse doesn't exactly live up to the expectations that sort of come attached with Critical's name. Okay, let's talk about the Midnight now because I think this one is a lot more interesting. The frequency response has been sitting on Crin's graph tool for the last couple months now with me basically just itching to get my ears on it. For reference, the original Yume, the IM that the Midnight is sort of built off of was an IM that I really liked in terms of tonality, but it just didn't have technical performance. And the trouble response as well was a little bit rolled off after 10K Hertz. The idea with the Midnight is to sort of rectify those issues and sort of bring the Yume to a more technical level. And as for whether they've succeeded in that, I think the answer is sort of. It's probably as good as the original Yume, if not better, just simply because it has more treble extension. And in fact, the treble extension on the Midnight is actually very, very impressive for $200. I think the only IMs that I can really think of that have it like matched even maybe are the uh, Shure, Let's Shure S12 and the 7 Hertz Timeless. And even then those IMs are um, very much a different type of architecture in terms of the driver topology. So yeah, very impressive treble extension on the Midnight and it's fairly smooth at that. The only niggle that I would really point out is a recession at around five to six K Hertz. And the effect of this is making the trouble response sound maybe a little bit weightless and a little bit too uh, feathery in terms of tactility. Unfortunately, technical performance is where my issues start cropping up with the Midnight. As I alluded to earlier, the Yume, the original Yume, was just not a very technical IM. I think at the time I said I would have placed it at around a C plus on Critical's ranking list in terms of technicalities. The Midnight by comparison is definitely more technical. It sounds like it has more clarity and notes aren't as blunted. With that being said, the overall sense of detail retrieval and that innate sense of detail to it is just not there. To me at least, this sort of reinforces the notion that frequency response isn't everything. Uh, because if you look at it on paper, the Midnight has like the ideal frequency response. It has an excellent bass shelf, proper peanut compensation, solid upper mid-range, and phenomenal treble extension. Yet with all that taken into consideration, it still just does not sound like a very detailed IM. Um, overall, I think I would place it around maybe a, maybe a B minus, maybe a B in terms of technicalities. It's decent for $200, but it's not exactly playing with four runners like the S12 and the Timeless in the $200 price bracket. If you wanna know about imaging, because I think that was something that um, they were sort of marketing it for, like being better than the Yume in terms of imaging, um, yeah, I would agree with that. It sounds more expensive in terms of soundstage, a little bit more precise. Um, with that being said, that's just sort of what happens when you boost treble extension. With all that being said though, this is just me being a very critical reviewer. And I think at the end of the day, the Yume Midnight is still a very competitive option, especially for listeners who are indexing heavily for treble extension which to be fair is something that most IMs on $200 are lacking heavily. Okay, and now let's talk about the Moondrop Blessing 2 Dusk, which I don't actually have on hand, so I'm just gonna show my Blessing 2, but I think you get the idea. Something that you'll notice is that for a lot of these collaboration IMs, the framework, the existing IM that was sort of adapted for the collaboration was not necessarily what I would consider to be a strong performer in the technical department. So I guess it becomes a question of what happens when you put a benchmark IM, an IM with respectable technicalities 
into Crinicle's hands. And, well, I've already gushed about the Dusk before, but I don't mind doing so again. The tonality of the Dusk is simply exceptional. Um, even if the market has gotten more competitive in maybe the last year or so since it's been released, there are still few IMs that compete with the Dusk under $1,000 for raw tuning. Um, it just sounds so natural, so right when you hear it. Um, just one of the best renditions of neutral with sub bass boost that I've heard to date. And then, as I just talked about, the technicalities on the Dusk are actually really solid. Um, I don't think it's quite as technical as the original Blessing 2, specifically in terms of imaging performance. And that's just sort of what happens when you add in that base shelf. But it has a really solid sense of detail, above average macro contrast, and still really solid imaging chops. Of course, it's not a perfect IM. It's $330, so you can expect there to be some trade-offs here and there. The dynamic driver being used in the Dusk, for example, sounds uncharacteristically dry for a dynamic driver. Um, not as bad as a BA, but it certainly is pushing it to my ears. And then the treble response is also a little bit gritty, a little bit rolled off after 10k hertz or so. But ultimately, these are niggles that I could apply to most of the flagship IMs on the market today even. And if the Blessing 2 was already nothing can top this at $300 good, the Dusk is basically in a class of its own for its price point. Um, and I, I really think it's only fitting that I steal a line from Critical here, and that is by Dusk. Um, to me, the Dusk is the shining example of what is possible with these collaboration IMs. And probably partially to blame as well for why I've been so critical of the Midnight, the Eclipse, and the CRN. It really just sets the bar that high. And yeah, that's going to do it for my review of Critical's collaboration IMs. If there is a takeaway from this, I think it is that these collaboration IMs work best when there's a strong existing framework already in place. Um, and that's sort of evidenced most by the Dusk. Those considerations in mind, what I want to see now, I think, is a flagship collaboration IM from Critical. It's worth noting that there was the Dawn, but it wasn't much of a commercial success. And I think that with the release of all these new collaboration IMs, they sort of offer the average listener a chance to sort of get a taste for Critical's tuning and what is possible with what he can do. Now, Critical himself has noted that he won't be doing a collaboration IM for a long while after this, but it isn't gonna stop me from dreaming. And yeah, that's gonna do it for this review. Thanks so much for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed, if it was informative, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.